Hi, I'm Steve Good. Welcome to my scroll saw workshop. The other day I posted a pattern on my blog of this uh, clock that I call the Patriot Clock. And I had a lot of email response from this clock, so I thought we'd come in the workshop today and build uh, another clock. Now, the one we're going to build today is much simpler, but it's the same construction techniques that I used on this clock. And basically what we're going to do today is build a clock that's just the top half of this with a different handle and a different uh, design on the front and sides. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to set this clock aside, and what I've done for the last uh, 30 minutes or so is go ahead, go ahead and build up all the stock that I need for this clock. And uh, basically you will need uh, one piece of three quarter inch stock that's milled to uh, seven and a half inches by whatever the pattern shows. You'll need some uh, half inch stock, which will be for the top and bottom, and some three eighths inch stock, which will be the front and the back and some more 3 inch stock for the two sides. And uh, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, cut out the pattern, apply it to the wood, and then uh, I'll meet you over to drill press. I'll show you a, a little bit of how I prepare these uh, patterns to apply to the wood. In this case, when I'm building a project that I want uh, all the pieces to fit really well, I cut them out on the table saw to the exact size, because in this case we're basically going to make a small box and we want all the edges to be nice and flat. So when I do this and I have a piece of wood that's going to exactly match the pattern, um, I take a straight edge and an X-Acto knife and I go ahead and cut the pattern out to the exact dimensions before I apply it to the wood and uh, it makes everything a little bit easier this way when you go ahead and get ready to assemble it. So I'll go ahead and take my straight edge here and uh, cut this piece out. And then we'll use our uh, standard technique of applying the pattern with the spray adhesive and uh, I'll cover the pattern with my clear adhesive box tape. And again the box tape is to help lubricate the blade and uh, keep the uh, blade from burning the wood. So you can see now that I have this cut out I can go ahead and apply my spray adhesive and apply the pattern right to the piece and then we can take it to the scroll saw and cut it out. Now in this case when you're cutting, making this clock um, you want the top of the pattern and the bottom of the pattern to align with the grain of the wood. In other words, you want the grain, if this clock is setting like this, you want the grain of the front and back piece running top to bottom, and the side pieces also, you're going to want it running top to bottom. So when you cut out your blanks, make sure you get that right. I'm going to take my uh, temporary spray adhesive now and apply it to the back of the pattern. I'm going to give it a pretty good coat. And now what I can do is go ahead and remember now we want the, you know, the grain to run top to bottom on this piece. So we want to make sure we apply the pattern that way. So we want to take the top of the pattern and put it at the top of the blank. And uh, try to get it lined up pretty well when you're putting it on here. So it meets at all four edges well. Okay, we've got the pattern applied. And now, like you've seen me do many times here in the workshop, I always coat my pattern with clear box tape again makes it much easier to cut so we'll go ahead and get our box tape on there real good and what I'll do now is just uh, take the rest of the pieces and follow the same process and uh, you know get the sides uh, the pattern on the side now of course the back of the clock and uh, all the bases we don't have to take to the scroll saw so Really all we're going to be cutting on this project is the face plate, the two sides, and the handle, the decorative handle that goes on top. Okay, a couple other pieces of prep work here I want to talk about real quick. Um, first of all, I'm going to cut the handle um, out of a uh, piece of uh, maple because I want to have a nice contrast for the handle from the uh, uh, Peruvian walnut that I'm using for the base of the clock. So to do that, I've, at the table saw, I'll make sure I cut one good square edge on the bottom of this piece of wood. And when I cut this pattern out, again, I cut right along the bottom of the handle. And that way, when we go to glue the handle to the top of the clock, we'll have a good straight edge that we can uh, uh, glue to the top. So make sure you get this pattern lined up with the edge. Uh, you don't want to be cutting this with your scroll saw, uh, because you'll have a hard time getting it flat enough without sanding it uh, to get it to glue to the top. Another piece of prep work I want to talk about is 
The two sides of this pattern are identical, so to save a little time with the scroll saw, uh, we might as well go ahead and use a technique called stack cutting. And basically to do that, you apply the pattern to one of the pieces, and then when you put these together, glue, you know, tape them up, use the tape and wrap it all the way around it, and then we'll cut them both at the same time. So what I'll do is when I apply the tape, I'll just wrap it all the way around to hold the piece together. And uh, some people even, I usually don't, but some people will even take uh, a hot glue gun and put a few dabs of hot glue on the side. Um, I don't think that's necessary on this piece, but uh, if you feel more comfortable with it, that's an option. Okay, I prepared my piece uh, to be stack cut. And you can see when I put this tape on here, I'm being very careful because these pieces are all cut out to the correct size to make sure everything's flushed up real good. Okay, so that's how you prepare your piece to stack cut. Here my drill press now. I'm going to go ahead and drill all the interior holes. And again, we've only got three pieces now because we're going to stack cut the uh, sides to draw our entry holes in. So we probably on this project only have maybe, uh, I don't know, less than 50 interior cuts to make at the scroll saw. So uh, this project's probably quite a bit easier than it's going to look when it's finished. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, begin drilling the entry holes and then uh, we'll head over to the uh, scroll saw and get started. I've drilled all my interior holes and you do want to take your time, uh, make sure you don't miss any, you don't want to get over to your saw and have to come back and drill more holes. So I usually miss one and do have to come back. Uh, I'll show you another thing I'm going to do on this clock that's probably not recommended, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, this cutout for the uh, two and three quarter inch clock insert we're going to use is a two and three eighths inch hole. And uh, the best way to do this would be to use a two and three eighths inch Forstner bit and I don't happen to have one of those uh, with me right now, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this uh, interior hole out uh, by hand on the scroll saw. Now the problem with that is, you know, you only get one opportunity to take wood away, and uh, so you want to make sure you're when you cut this to cut well inside the line, and then if the clock is too snug, you can always sand it down uh, at an oscillating spindle sander or by hand to make it fit right, uh, but don't overcut this circle if you cut it by hand or you'll have a clock that won't fit and you can't put wood back on. I'm going to cut this project today with a Flying Dutchman Scroll Reverse number 5 blade. Um, there's not very many uh, real intricate cuts in this pattern, so the number 5 I believe will give me a good combination of speed and the ability to cut some of the uh, smaller pieces of this pattern. Uh, so I've gone ahead and chucked up that blade and with a new blade I'm going to go ahead and uh, start on the stack cut piece first because that'll uh, definitely be the most stress the blade will have through this project and I, I think we can get through this project pretty easily with one blade. Uh, so I'm going to cut the stack cut piece first and uh, we'll go from there. Now to cut this I'm going to start out with all the interior, uh, the smaller interior cuts first and then I'll move to the uh, bigger pieces later. Uh, we just want to make sure we you know, hold the integrity of this piece together so uh, the tape's good and solid and can hold it together while we're cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and find the uh, one of these little small interior cuts and uh, position my chair a little better. I'm going to get some tension on the blade here. Move the chair over just a little bit to get more comfortable. And we'll start cutting this little circle.